I almost want, don't want to do anything else, oh. but just stay right here. <laughs> oh, Lord, we love you so much. We love you so much. Thank you. We thank you for being here, and we thank you for loving us despite us. We thank you for never giving up on us. We thank you that your blood was enough. Thank you, Lord. We thank you and love you in Jesus. Beautiful, holy, powerful name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, if you are visiting here today, I don't see anybody I don't know. Oh, I do see a couple people. <laughs> Please, if you did not get a gift bag, please pick one up as you leave. We're so happy you're here with us. We pray that you receive something today of the, from the Lord that is going to bless you for the rest of the day and the week. And um, today's Bible study, oh, yeah, it was led by me. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time. You guys are great. I mean, we have a bunch of great saints in this building i'm telling you and next sunday we're going to be blessed again by gino maini teaching sunday bible class we're having a great time we have so many great anointed teachers in this church so we're we're having diversity we're having different one each sunday so praise god and uh we are blessed by our preschoolers and by our teachers I want to thank you, Pastor Tracy, for all you do at TLC Kids Care. And just to let you know, the children will be presenting Christmas plays during December. And I'm telling you, it is a blessing. It is such a blessing. You want to be inspired? Watch these kids. So uh, during the Christmas season, uh, this December, there will be a hiatus or a break for the TLC men, the TLC women gatherings, and we will be not gathering for the Enoch prayer either, but we do want you to continue to pray for Volusia County, Israel, and our, our beautiful, wonderful America. Also, uh, just remember there that even though we're not having a Christmas Eve service, prepare yourself for next year, because we will next year. <laughs> And also, what is the reason for the season? Jesus. Let's say it together. Jesus is the reason for the season. And uh, <laughs> so we are going to do another act of worship now. We're going to do our tithes and worship uh, offerings. And yes. And you know what? The greatest gift that we got was Jesus. And... Uh, God gives us everything. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. We are so blessed. So let's give our tithes and offerings with a cheerful, cheerful attitude. <laughs> My gift of praise I bring to lay before my King. My gift of praise I bring before you, Lord. I bow
Hallelujah. Man, that was beautiful. Oh, yeah. Ah, let's pray real quick. Dear Father, uh, today, many in Arkansas and Illinois and Kentucky, Missouri, Mississippi, and Tennessee, Father, they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know where to turn. They're confused. They're lost. They're afraid and they're hurt. Father, many are missing. And you know, Father, you know what they need. It's your son, Jesus Christ, and his peace. Father, right now I speak to a speeding up of rescue efforts, a speeding up of recovery efforts. I say that all the glory of your heavens would come together and help these folks that are in such great need today, that need you today. And Father, through the governments and the uh, emergency management folks and the first responders, for those that bring water and food and ice, for those that bring shelters and warmth. Father, I ask you to speed them up and bless them and encourage them. Give them what they need to carry out the task for those that are in great, great need. And Father, we just ask you in your miraculous way to lay your hand upon them to heal their land. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a mess those storms have made. And it's around the holidays. <clears throat> the uh, message today is, is holiday emotions. It was an uh, exhortation on the email two weeks ago. And uh, as I read it, I was really excited about the practical, down-to-earth bits and pieces and nuggets that you can get out of Scripture to help you with the holidays. I know that Holidays can evoke a lot of emotions, good and, and bad. And I want to talk about the emotions and what can bring those emotions out this time of year. But more than that, what I want to do is share with you some scriptures that was in this exhortation on how to deal with them. And I've just got a feeling that you're going to need them in the coming weeks. I just got a feeling that in the next coming weeks, there's going to be some emotions in you as you go through the Christmas season, the holiday season, and I suspect that you're going to experience some of these, and you may have to turn to the scriptures that we're going to share today and to the points that we're going to make so that you can draw on them and draw closer to God. Amen? Amen. Everyone sort of knows what emotions are. In psychology, emotion is often defined as a complex state of feelings that result in physical 
and psychological changes that influence thought and behavior. Emotionality is associated with a range of psychological phenomena, including temperament, personality, mood, and motivation. I want you to think that it comes from that soulish part of us, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And so these are the sort of things that are moved during the holiday season. This fellow, Paul Ekman, he's an emotional psychologist. He theorized about emotional expressions. You know, like, man, I could see it in your face. You've been there before, and somebody's probably said it to you. Based on his theory, he proposed that there were seven emotional expressions universal to people all over the world. And I suspect this coming holiday season, you're going to see them, if not in the marketplace, in the mall, at the store. I suspect you may even see them at your home. His theory was based on seven emotional expressions. Happiness, sadness, surprise, fear, anger, disgust, and contempt. Uh, one uh, social psychologist even said, well, there's 27 emotions admiration, adoration, aesthetic, appreciation, amusement, anger, anxiety, awkwardness, boredom, and the list goes on for about 20 more. They even have emoticons or emojis for texting if you're so inclined to have a phone and you text with somebody younger than 50. It's got the bang your head on the desk. It's got to put your hand up. It's got the everything. And then you've even got a, a circle you can put in and it'll show a short movie. What's that called? There you go. There's somebody that's young. Amen. <laughs> ah. and, and our emotions can really be heightened during the, the holidays. The American Psychological Association found that 38% of people say that their stress increases in the holidays and the APA says that only eight people say that eight percent of the people say they feel happier did you even know that there's a condition for the fear of the holidays herotophobia from the Greek herot which means uh, it's an irrational fear of the holidays and there's a lot of things that can bring out holiday emotions uh, for example, if you just ask me to go to the mall with you, that, that'll bring out some emotions in me. And they're not that 8% that feel happier when you say, let's go to the mall. Uh, how about traffic and cell phones? It was Tyler and I were riding around, and the guy's on a cell phone. We're trying to go somewhere, and he's got the cell phone held sideways in, in his right hand, and he's talking to his wife, and he's driving with his left hand, and he is oblivious to everything else, traffic and cell phones. Many of us have lost family during this time of the year, and this can be a very sad part of the year for us. And, and, and how about family? It may not happen in your family. How about family dysfunction this time of the year? Or really, any time of the year, right? And so here's something that's good. It's called Christmas card guilt. You know what I mean? Like, you go in the mailbox, and you got a Christmas card. Boy, you didn't send them a Christmas card. So let's go quick get a Christmas card, because we got to send them a Christmas card, because they sent us a Christmas card. It's Christmas card guilt. Money will run you off the charts during Christmas. And really, uh, there is a thing called SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. It is part of many, many holidays. And often this time of year, uh, for the first responders in the room, there can be a lot of alcohol and drug misuse that can flare up and cause all sorts of things to happen. Even something as easy as overeating can cause stress and emotions and guilt because January 1st is coming. And you've got to have you know, you've got to lose 10 pounds January 1st, no matter who you are, where you are. Every year you've got to lose 10. I've got to lose 10 pounds January 1st. Yeah. And if you travel during the holidays, 
like some people I know, you got to worry about tickets, COVID, airports, baggage, parking, rudeness, costs, delays, and that's just a few of them. Hey, and how about this? Gift-giving guilt. I mean, you got to do it, right? Somebody gives you a gift, so then you look for a gift that somebody else gave you. It causes guilt, right? You got this gift, and we didn't give them a gift. Hey, who, who gave us that, uh, that glass bowl over there? Let's wrap it up and hope they didn't really. I mean, yeah. For me, get me a, a card to a bookstore or my family. I say, write me a letter. That's what I want. I got them stuck up on my house. And just remember, only 8% said that holidays bring joy. And family gatherings and all the personalities coming together under stress or those that don't come together under stress. How about constant job pressures during the holidays and the dreaded Christmas party? I've avoided them as long as I can, and now it's, it doesn't hurt my feelings to just avoid them. The office party, the work party, the party where you got to go, and then you see people like you've never seen them before, acting like they've never acted before at work, and then it kind of changes your perspective of them a little bit. And you think, wait a second, the dreaded lampshade wearing the lampshade and dancing. All of this evokes emotions during the holidays. And it's almost like a spirit of stress that causes these emotions. And think about it again, it comes from that soulish part of us, that mind, our will, and our emotions. Now, to help with holiday emotions, there are some jewel scriptures. I mean, the Bible is so current that it knew about this before we came along. And these scriptures can assist you as you go through the holidays. And as you go through these holidays, I want you to, if you can, think about these scriptures. Jot them down and study them, use them, put them into action is where it really, really comes in. The first one is Galatians 5, 22 and 23 out of the New American Standard. But the fruit of the Spirit, now we're talking about emotions. Emotions come from the mind, the will, the emotions. They come from that soulish part of us. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Now, I'll tell you, fruit takes a long time to grow. If you've ever planted an apple tree or a lemon tree, fruit takes a long time to grow. And you've got to be patient with it. But I have you know, when you plant the plant of the fruit, and when you first plant the plants of the fruits of the Spirit, they begin to grow. And I'll tell you in a miraculous way, you can start accessing them. How good you can access them is up to you. I mean, think about love. This time of year, I would say, love does not count wrongs, but it rejoices in rights. Plug that in this year. Plug that in this holiday. When you didn't get what you wanted and somebody acted like you didn't think they should act. Love doesn't, especially in your family. Love doesn't count wrongs. It rejoices in the right. Love and, jo love and joy. The joy of the Lord should be what? Your strength. It should be your strength. It's like peace. This peace I give you, not as a world, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me. Believe also in God. In my Father's house are many rooms. He's got a place for us. And you can really get frustrated this time of year. You need to really lean on self-control. I would say discipline in a person is one of the strongest. Self-discipline is one of the strongest traits you can ever have. And you can apply it to everything. 
And so I would say this. The next scripture is Ephesians 4, 26, and 27. Think about this time of year when it's real easy on the street, at the traffic light, in the line, even at McDonald's drive-in. It's real easy. Be angry and yet do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. And don't give the devil an opportunity or a place. The Greek word for angry is to be provoked. Don't be provoked. Or don't give a place to be provoked. Why go in somewhere where you know you're going to get provoked? If you don't agree with someone's viewpoint, walk away from the table. You don't have to argue with them. You can still believe like you believe, and they can believe like they can believe. Don't give the devil a place. And resolve things as quickly as possible. It says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. I mean, a quick apology. I mean, right then to say, I was wrong in that. Hey, forgive me. I, I didn't see it right. Make it right quickly. Because if not, what it does is it festers. Hey, I didn't mean it that way. I didn't mean to say it that way. I'm stressed. It's the holidays. Forgive me. See, Satan, Satan is getting a place or an opportunity. He is a spiritual enemy. And we've got a way to fight a spiritual enemy. In 2 Corinthians 10, here's what it says. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. We've got an enemy that's not fleshly. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And it says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. See, a stronghold is a fortress. It's a defensive structure. And a stronghold can get a hold of you. And you can be in and under and surrounded by a stronghold that is the wrong stronghold, a satanic stronghold. And it can hold you in this fortress so nothing can get through. Nobody can get in. And, and what it says is that you have to uh, have the weapons to fight strongholds. And those are the fruits of the Spirit. Those are not getting angry. Those are bringing every thought into captivity. Listen to Psalm 18, verse 1. It's a stronghold we're talking about. It says, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. You see, strongholds can have a hold of you where nothing can get in. Or you can get into God's stronghold so nothing can get to you. And to take captive, you have to take your thoughts captive. Um, and I know that many of you have probably done this. I know that I have done this. When you get into a position where you get aggravated, you can be quick to speak instead of slow to speak. Scriptures say, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. And, and what can happen is you let that out, and you don't have it captive. It now has you, ha it now has you captive. See, we have to keep in mind who God is and what he can do. Psalm 19, 1 says this, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. But we may have to remind ourselves over and over. There was a picture uh, on the news this morning of a new planet and a star and how it was just located and just found by this new telescope. And God made it millions of years ago. He, he made it. Scriptures say he breathed out the heavens. We got to remind ourselves. We got to keep this thing in perspective. We got to keep these holidays in perspective. And people always talk about the commercialization of Christmas. 
See, we never took down our tree from last year. Pastor Ramona's the other day, she said, oh, you got your tree up. We never took it down. We wanted it to be Christmas all year long. And so, as many of us have changed our shopping habits and gone to more online stuff, the little smiley face era thing will drop off stuff at the door. And I'm usually the first one out in the morning and generally the first one in. And so I get the little smiley face with the era and I take it in and I set it under the Christmas tree all year. I plug the Christmas tree in. I take a picture of it and we have a family chat. And I send it to the whole family. I say, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Didn't want to put it down. So when my wife said we're going to keep it up all year, I kept the poinsettia out front. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's a little more difficult to keep a live poinsettia alive for a whole year than it is for a plastic Christmas tree in the house. But I did it. Yeah. 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 Amen. <laughs> ah. Ah. And Courtney got me a new one yesterday, but I've got the old one. It's a, it's a point now. So I just wanted this last whole year to be a holiday. And uh, you know, when you think about Christmas, at least my mindset, and I think I might speak for others in the room, is this whole spending thing. This holiday emotions is what we're talking about and how to get through them. The average person in America is projected to spend $998, of which 650 were intended for gifts and 230 for non-gift holiday items. Parents, none of my kids better, this better tune this out. Parents plan to spend an average of $276 a child when it comes to Christmas. 10% of Europeans go into debt due to Christmas shopping, and 1 in 10 people return their gifts to the store. 41% of Americans are willing to take on debt due to gift shopping. And $15.2 billion is the estimated total of unwanted presents. America is expected to spend almost $6.1 billion on Christmas trees. Not me. And in 2021, 21% of Americans plan to spend less money on holiday gifts. 56% of consumers want to receive a gift card as a present. And women spend 20 hours on average shopping for Christmas presents. And men spend about 10 minutes on Christmas Eve in Walgreens or CVS or whatever else is open. And I'm going to tell you, this year you better go early because many of the stores are closing. So guys, you better be thinking ahead. Walgreens is liable to be closed. But all of this throughout the Christmas season and throughout work, it can weigh heavily on you. It can press you down. It, it can make you lose your focus on what Christmas is about. You can get so emotional and so wrapped up that you'll say things and do things that you wish you hadn't done or said. And you'll get way ahead of yourself on trying to fill in every void. You don't have to do that. Hebrews 13, 5 says this, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Getting into a state of contentment is a life-changing place. If you can get into a state of contentment. My father said many times, comparison kills contentment. I mean, keeping up with the Jones can kill you. Being content can save your life. The Greek word for being content is to be possessed of unfailing strength. It's to be strong, to defend or to ward off or to be satisfied. Look, contentment is a strength 
being content in what you have and where you are in life is empowering. It's life-changing. Uh, popular singer just came out with a new album. I think it's called 30. And in some of those songs, she talks about things that aren't right in her life, things that aren't there. Now, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful voice, but there's more to it than the voice. So how are you feeling this Christmas season, this holiday season? I hope that what you'll do today is take some love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and self-control with you. I'm hoping what you'll do is to be content in what you have. My hope is that, that if there are strongholds around you concerning gift-giving and families and emotions, that what you'll do is you'll break those strongholds down and rebuild them with godly principles and a godly attitude. Don't carry guilt. I want to end with this in Philippians 4. And this is the way you get there. Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, my brothers and sisters, and I say to you, finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. But it goes one step further. Verse 9. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. So today is an activation day. What you've heard is the Word of God in ways that you can address holiday emotions, good and bad. And if you've heard that it takes thinking about these sort of things and not everything else, that contentment is a strength. To think that someone just sits there and says, oh, I'm just content, I'm content, I'm content. It's a weakness. No. If you can find somebody that doesn't worry about stuff, you're going to find somebody that will live a long time. Contentment is a strength. And it says to think about all these things, but more than that, put them into practice. Put them into practice in your life today. Put them into practice this holiday season. My hope is this is like a nuts and bolt. Stick it in your pocket, in your toolbox, and then pull it out between now and whenever and use, it. use these scriptures. Meditate on them. Take them and internalize them and say, that's me. This is not me. Let's pray. Dear Father, we love you today. We thank you, God. We thank you that we can, whatever's true and noble and right and pure and lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything's excellent or praise, praiseworthy, Father, help us to think on these such things and not these other things. Help this soulish part of our body, our mind, our will, and our emotion. Help us be in charge of that. Help Help us to let you, allow you in there. These strongholds that keep us in these negative thought patterns and negative actions, Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit break them down and that what happens is that we build up around us strongholds in you. And Father, help us to get what we've received and to put it into practice this holiday season. For I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. And as it should be with you, Go in peace. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Yeah, amen. amen. Pastor Louie, thank you for that powerful, applicable word that we need during this season. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And now we're going to close with this song because we want to rejoice with the angels. We are blessed that we have a Savior who sacrificed himself just for you. Barbara, he did it just.
just, let's give it all we got. Let's sing like the angels sang in the heavens. Gloria, sing glory in the highest. Gloria, sing glory in the highest. Gloria, sing glory in the highest. Sing it again. Gloria, sing glory in the highest. Gloria, sing glory in the highest. Gloria, sing glory in the highest. Yeah. 